Book of Spenta Armage, Daughter of Jehovah, Being of the First Deliverance of God's Chosen People. Chapter 1 Jehovah spake to Spenta Armage, goddess of Haut Saiti, in Nirvana, in the Ark of Speta, commander of the south fields of Abaram, in the Orion plains of Bilothowichian, of a reign of two hundred thousand years, surveyor for Otias, ten thousand years, leader of the Oixen, seventy thousand years, captain of Goliath's roadways in the forests of Luga, twenty thousand years, founder and ruler of Isas, thirty thousand years, trencher of the High Gusets swamps, four thousand years, goddess of Nor, goddess of Unigi, goddess of Pautu, each ten thousand years, saying, Two, my daughter, behold, the red star and her heavens come thy way. She will cross the ark of Speta four years and thirty-two days, riding. Open thou thy fields in Abaram, and give her forty years indulgence, for this is the first of her deliverance. Three, Penta Armage answered, saying, I see the red star, the earth, O Jehovah, like a wandering ship in a wide ocean, she cometh through my fields, the young earth, traveling on, carefully in the roads of Salkawatka. Hath she so soon, but little more than sixty thousand years, overcome her enduring knots and torturing hells? Four, in thy wisdom and power, O Jehovah, I will go in person to this corporeal world and encourage her God and lords for the excellent labor done. 5. Jehovah said, Call thy counsel and proclaim from my throne the feast of the Ark of Speta. Then Spenta Armage called her high counsel a hundred millions, sons and daughters of Jehovah, and she ascended to her place in the midst of the throne of the Great Spirit. 6. And there were present Obed, god of Ois, and Embrach, Gavaini, goddess of Iptor, of the Solastis Plains, Ab, first Shriver, of Riv Saying, Holon Ho, god of Lugam, Raisi, goddess of Esdras, Wishse, god of Zuth, and Ronega. And all these gods and goddesses were above a hundred thousand years raised in Aetherian realms and knew the earth before inhabited by man. 7. On a visit to Pensa Armage were Aux, Orion chief of Mitre Lan, 50,000 years, Marshal of Whis Whiskey Lu, 30,000 years, God of Tunsin and the Tarps Roads, 90,000 years, and C. Wagon, chieftainess of the Orion Ark of Sulas, 200,000 years. Mistress of Aftong, and the plains of Bel, three hundred thousand years. Pilotes of Luwalu, one hundred thousand years. Goddess of Yun, in the mountains of Jemking, and Haoha, founder of Ogi, of Siam, of Wikawik, and the twelve Nirvanian Olse, in Laouts, Elihagam, together with their traveling hosts, each five million. 8. Penta Armid said, For the glory, O Jehovah, I proclaim the feast of the Ark of Speta, and these my visiting hosts shall enjoy the four years' deliverance of the Red Star and her heavens. 9. Then responded Aux, and then Si Wagon, then Hao Ha, speaking at great length and rejoicing for the invitation. And they related many adventures on other stars in the time of the Ark of Deliverance, the Ark of Speta, and with what gods and goddesses they journeyed, and what chiefs and chieftainesses. chieftainesses. 10. So Penta Armage spake to her chief marshal, saying, Send thou heralds to the builders, and order me an Air Vagna, capable of five hundred million, and of speed grade sixty. After this, thou shalt select from my attendants one hundred million, and after that three hundred million, of the Agisi. Eleven. With these and with my visitors, I will start for the Red Star in twenty days. 
the proper officers attended to these things, and while they were moving about, behold, the red star, the earth, rose up in the far-off place, the roadway, and the Essenar saw it, and they chanted, Twelve, what is yonder? The red star, Jehovah, thy breath had spoken, thy voice, the silent motion. O thy endless power, Jehovah. Thirteen, around about her, close, what is that filled with angels, thousands of millions? Wondrous are thy works, O Jehovah, and measureless. She rideth round the sun, two hundred and seventy million miles. Fourteen, it is her atmosphere, traveling with her, its boundary, Chinvat. How fearfully hast thou created, O Jehovah, and the magnitude of thy places. That little red star is a world, O Father, and the thousands of millions of angels. Why do they stay in such heavens, O Jehovah? 15. Then the trumpeters afar off answered, She that spinneth round the sun, the red star, the earth, a new world, a generator of the souls of men. The gods have called her, but she will not hear. Her atmosphere is full of angels struggling for the earth. But thy hand is upon them, O Jehovah. Thy trumpeters will line the roads of Salkwatka. 16. Then sang the Essenars, How lovely are thy works, O Jehovah! Too lovely are thy places, O Jehovah! Too lovely is the red star, the earth, O Jehovah! Thy children love it while in mortal form. After death too much they love it, O Jehovah! 17. The pipers answer for Jehovah from the wide east. Oh, so little to love, made I the earth, the red star. I gave her poisoned weeds and vines and grasses, millions of death-dealing serpents. Then I created poisoned marshes and terrible fevers. In sore travail and full of misery, created I man on the earth, that he should turn and look upward for a holier place. 18. Then sang the Essenars, Too lovely created thou thy atmosphere in heavens, O Jehovah. Thy bounded heavens that travel with the red star, the earth. The spirits raised up from the mortal earth find too much to love in thy lower heavens, O Jehovah. 19. The pipers again answered for Jehovah. My lower heavens created I full of darkness and evil possibilities. A place for madness created I it, a place for lying and deceit, full of hell and torments, to drive man upward, to blow my breath upon him, to lift him up as one lighteth the fire by blowing. 20. Spenta Armage spake from Jehovah's throne, saying, What is the deliverance of man? Is it from his mother's womb? Is it from his corporeal body? Is it from the corporeal world and her atmosphere? Three births have the Father given unto all men. In the first, man hath nothing to do, as to his shaping or time in his mother's womb. In the second, he hath a little more to do, as to directing his course during his mortal life. But for the third, for the higher heavens, he must work for his own deliverance. 21. Penta Armage said, Three kinds of earth deliverance for man created the Creator. First, from his mother's womb, coming, crying, blank and helpless. Second, from the tetrachs, earthly passions and desires, serious and full of fear. Third, from the enemies of the Great Spirit. This is the Feast of Speta. Chapter 2 Penta Armage said, I looked afar and saw the earth and her heavens traveling on. I listened to the voice of mortals. A merchant counted over his gains. He said, this is heaven. A drunkard quaffed a cup of poison. He said, this is heaven. A wanton said, this is heaven. A general, red with blood, counted the badges on his breast. He said, this is heaven. A tyrant, rich and toiling slave, said, this is heaven. Then a vast multitude, all smeared with the blood of war, pointed to a field of mortals slain and said, This is heaven. A farmer stretched wide his arms toward his great possessions, uncultivated. He said, 
This is heaven. A little child with a toy said, This is heaven. 2. Then spake Jehovah, saying, None of these can thou convince to the contrary. They are not ready for deliverance. 3. I listen to the voice of spirits, the angels traveling with the earth. A wanderer going about with nothing to do said, This is heaven. An obsessor of mortals and of other angels said, This is heaven. The fairies and butterfly angels, the triflers, that forever look in crystal waters to behold their own form, said, This is heaven. The rollicking, deceiving angels went and inspired mortals to falsehood. These angels said, This is heaven. Vampire angels that nestle in the atmosphere of mortals, largely living on their substance, said, This is heaven. Evil angels obsessing mortals for murder's sake, to make mortals burn houses and torture helpless creatures, said, This is heaven. 4. Then spake Jehovah, saying, None of these can thou convince to the contrary. They are not ready for deliverance. 5. Again I listened to the sounds coming from the far-off earth, and I heard the prayers of mortals. The king prayed for his kingdom and for himself. The general prayed for success in war. The merchant for great gains. The tyrant for great authority. 6. Jehovah said, Only the earth can answer such prayers. 7. I listened again for the prayers of mortals. They had great afflictions, dire diseases and famines and wars. The merchants were bankrupt, and there was great suffering, and they prayed for deliverance. 8. Jehovah said, Should thou deliver them, they would return to their old evil habits. I say unto thee, The merchants shall be bankrupt, the king shall fail, the general be overthrown, the healthy shall be sick for a season. Save they know my power, they cannot learn. Save they feel affliction, they will not help one another. Shall a man say, O oh, Jehovah, come thou and heal, heal the sick? Shall he not first of all recognize my will and know my power? 9. To give money to the drunkard, what good is that? To give wealth and earthly prosperity to them that acknowledge not me is to set them against me. To give healing to the fevered is to teach them that I have no power in the unseen air. Answer not thou the prayers of these. 10. I listened once more to the prayers of mortals, and they were such as lived according to their higher light. They purified the flesh by pure food and by bathing every day, and they went about doing constantly, hoarding up neither clothes nor silver nor gold nor anything earthly, and they purify their thoughts by putting away on by putting away the evil tongue and the evil eye and evil ear. And many of them were bound by the kings and the tyrants and the laws of mortals, and some of them were sick. And they prayed, saying, Great is my affliction, O Jehovah. I know that in thy sight I am justly punished. 11. But hear thou my prayer, O Father. Make me strong, that I may carry heaven burdens for the weary. Give me liberty, that I may go about helping the poor forever. Give me wisdom, that I may uncover the glories before men. 12. Jehovah said, Go thou, my daughter, and deliver them. They are ready for deliverance. Answer thou the prayers of such. 13. Then I called my host together, five hundred millions, in the Nervanian heavens, in Haut Saidi, in Etheria, the highest heaven. And we entered into the Air Vagna, as swelling high on every side. The music of millions cheered us on. Upward, high up shone the glimmering red star, whereon now our steersmen pointed the fire arrow to shoot meteor-like across Jehovah's pathway, and thitherward turned out buoyant souls, saluting our starters with a happy goodbye. 14. Arise, arise, by my vested power in thee, O Jehovah, shall the elements fall before my will. Arise, onward, to the red star, speed on, ere Vagna, upward on. 15. Thus spake Pensa Armage, her voice mellow and sweet, but so tuned to the spears it could be heard the breath of a world. And Jehovah, 
with whose power and will she had learned to be as one, by long experience and studying submission to his will, lent a willing ear and strong hand. Out shot the flames, the buoyant force manufactured by less skilled workmen learning the trade of gods, where world, where world the million screws of fire, propelling till the mighty ship reeled and turned and rose from its foundation, and with all its joyous hosts aboard, shouting loud and singing praise to him who ruleth over all. Then turning round and round, slowly, spiral-like, the great secret form and force of vortices now first revealed to man, to show the plan of worlds, and how holden in their places, and moved in universal harmony and endless creation, the great Ervagna began her course in the roadway of South Watka in Etheria, shooting toward the red star, the young earth. 16. Nearing first the Oixanian spars of Ochesu, where were gathered near the road ten million spectators to see the goddess pass in her ship, and their banners waved and their music burst forth most exhilarating, the which were answered by the Ervagna's cheering host and sailing streamers. She halted to salute in honor the goddess Uetisiv, and then upward shot a thousand miles suddenly. 17. Again onward, turning the breadth of the road a million miles to the right to salute Voltania, goddess of the swamps of Aelasasak, where stood by the portico of her heavenly palace seven million pupils in their thousandth year of tuition to receive the passing blessing of the Orion chieftainess Penta Armage, and thither but a halt, as it were a nod, and downward on their heads, Penta Armage sent a shower of newly created flowers from the spear above, and in turn heard their chorus rise joyfully, in as many million words of love and admiration. 18. Still onward, upward sped the Air Vagna, her host viewing the scenes on every side, here most the richest part and most glorious places of Sakwatka, where the Aetherian worlds, rich in the glitter of swamps, shining on the countless rainbow arches and crystal pyramids, afford an extensive view of the new Orion boundaries of Otesan's broad kingdoms. Here course the thousands of excursionists from the measureless regions of the Huan Lights, where are to be seen a million varieties of fire ships, of sizes from ten miles across to the breadth of a world, in unceasing travel, in tens of thousands of directions, onward in their ways, every several one a history of millions of years, and of thousands of millions of souls, and every soul rich in the knowledge of thousands of worlds. 19. By music alone, some their ships propelled, the vibratory chords affording power sufficient in such high-skilled hands, and the tunes changing according to the regions traversed. Others, even by colors made in the waves of sound, went forward, carrying millions of angels, every one attuned so perfectly that his very presence lent power and beauty to the monarch vessel. And downward and upward, and east and west, and north and south, of every angle and course, such were the traveling regions of Wella Gauthage in the Aetherian fields of Otisan. 20. And of the million ships, with their tens of thousands of millions of spirits, who so great a goddess, like Penta Armage, could turn her well-learned eyes on anyone, and know its home regions, and from what Orion pastures sailed, or perhaps Nervanian rivers, or, like her visiting friends, now with her, great Alks, and see Watgon, and Hauha, that with her stood side by side, reading the coursing fleets and relating to one another who they were, and the great chiefs aboard, with whom thousands of years ago they had been together taming some rambling star and quieting its disturbed vortex, or perhaps surveying a roadway many millions of miles through an Agian forest. 21. And the while the heir of Vagna was shooting on in the hands of her proper officers, every one to his part and all the host in varied amusement. For such is the labor of the high raised in heaven. Labor itself becometh an amusement of great relish. Coming then to the crossings near Bilothawichian, 
where was a small colony, 90 million Aetherian weavers, superintended by Penta Armage's ward, Ho Wuel, god of 2,000 years, who knew she was coming his way, and had lighted the roadway a hundred thousand miles in honor thereof. She turned the air of Agna and cast the streamers and banners, saluting. Here again, Penta Armage sent down to her beloved sons and daughters, for every one, flowers and keepsakes, and on every flower was written the history and mission to the earth and our heavens, and then again, the air of Agna upward rose and sped on. 22. Thus in Jehovah's wide universe went forth the goddess, the chieftainess, Sepenta Armage, went toward the red star, passing through 10,000 varieties of Aetherian worlds and roadways in the Jayan fields and forest of high heaven, seeing millions of Aetherian ships going hither and thither, everyone knowing its own mission and field of labor, while the highest raised gods and goddesses would exchange courtesies with the fiery vehicles and speak them, to know whither bent and for what purpose. 23. Then rising high, here on a level lieth the earth, here the boundary of her vortex, Chinvat, just beyond the sweep of the moon, halteth here to view the rolling earth, her land and water, and her atmospherian heavens, the sojourning place of the newly dead, and of such as have not aspired to rise to holier heavens. 24. Quickly now, Penta Armage taketh in the situation, and ordereth on the air of Agna, which now taketh a downward course, steering straight toward the habitable earth, slowly now, turning slowly and descending, viewing all the regions on every side in the great vortex, she spies the plateau Kraushivi, the place of God, new founded. 25. And to her companions and to her hosts quickly, Penta Armage of the Nervanian Chengotha, explaineth the place, and, stretching forth her slender hand, itself most like a stream of fire, she crieth out, Behold my anchorage, here bring my ship and make fast, where riseth now the voices of my weary God and his lords, of me so long expectant, in thy wisdom and power, O Jehovah, I will raise them up. Chapter 3. Jehovah spake to God, ruler of Atmospheria and of the earth, saying, Well done, O my son, the beginning of the end of thy trials is at hand. I have spoken in the highest heavens, in my Aetherian worlds, in the gardens of Hyot Saidi, near the Ark of Speta, to my daughter, who hath attained to be one with me, a Nervanian in the regions of Chengotha, the holy Spenta Armage. 2. Her ship, an Aravagna, with 500 million Aetherian deliverers on board, hath started on the road Salkwatka, swiftly bound to thy regions, to thy new plateau, Kraushivi. 3. Send thou word to Yima to come, and to Vishnu, and to Os, each to come in rank, attended by 10 million, great above 70, with SNRs and marshals and captains and generals to come to Kraushivi. 4. And send thou invitations to thy diva to come, and to thy sub gods, and to thy lord gods, and to thy lords, in all the divisions of heaven and the divisions of the earth, and to bring of their people all above grade 50. And to thy marshals give thou a list of all who will be with thee in Kraushivi on that day. And thy marshals shall apportion and divide and arrange all thy hosts thus assembled in Kraushivi, according to grade, approaching thy throne in four lines, east and west and north and south, and thy throne shall be the extreme east. 5. And in the center of the cross shall thy marshal provide space sufficient for the host of Sepenta Armage to land her Aravagna and to disembark. But at the extreme boundary of the lions of thy host, thou shalt draw a circle, and thither shall thy light markers, light makers, erect pillars of light, making the circle as a wall of light, and as the diameter of the circle is to the distance down to the earth's surface. So a tenth thereof shalt thou make as a summit of the apex of the canopy of thy capital chamber, 
for the holy council of thy goddess, Penta Armage. 6. God said, Thy will be done, O Jehovah. And thereupon God sent word by his messengers, as commanded by the great spirit, sent invitations to all the gods and lords of heaven and earth, commanding them to come to Krauschivim. 7. And the Lord gods and gods and lords thus notified appointed substitutes to rule in their places, and they made Otevans, everyone suitable to the number of angels he was to take with them. And they embarked and rose up from their several places in Atmospheria and the earth, and, being guided in their courses by such experts as had learned the way, they came to Krauschivi, where they were received by the chief marshal of God and his officers, and allotted through several places, according to their respective grades. But as a plateau was above grade 50 in the earth's vortex, so there were no angels of less grade than 50 amongst all the hosts assembled. 8. And Jehovah commanded God to number the angels thus assembled in Krauschivi, and there were 7,975,800,000 officers and all. 9. And the day and the hour of their assembling, when they were numbered, was the self same time that Penta Armage's fire ship arrived at Chinvat, when her light burst in full view to the hosts of gods in Krauschivi, and they all beheld her coming, saw the manner in which a chieftainess cometh to the lower heavens, and because of the great glory before them, they burst forth in a song of praise to Jehovah, the seven thousand million. 10. Jehovah spake to God, saying, Ascend my throne, ascend thy throne, my son, and allot the council and thy officers to their place, for quickly now, behold, my daughter will descend, and when she cometh, my voice will be with her for the years and the days of the dawn of Dan. 11. So God ca caused his counsel and his marshal and his diva to take their places and be in readiness for the emancipated sons and daughters. And presently, the descending star grew brighter and larger, larger and brighter, till like a sun she shone abroad over all the plateau of Krauschivi. 12. In awe stood the gods at sight of the sublime spectacle, for the light of the Erevagna was brilliant, and unlike all the lights of the lower heavens, and new to nearly all the people. 13. Nearer and nearer descended the ship of light, till soon the music of her host descended down to those beneath, who, awe-stricken and buoyant with delight, burst forth, entranced with the glory thereof, singing, by the for force of Jehovah's light upon them, the same glorious anthem. 14. And now the marshals spread the way, for close at hand came the Erevagna, over the bows of which Penta Armage shone like a central sun, and with her, her visiting host, Aux and Hauha, and see Wagon. So, but for Penta Armage holding out her taper hand, the host below had hardly known which of the four great lights Jehovah had sent. Presently, the curtain swept across the high pyramid of the capital, and then the transparent blankets and crystal framework, and now shot down the anchors, 300,000, lower and lower, slowly came the mighty ship, till her screenwork, from which the anchors hung, touched the very floors of the capital, capital, and all radiant with holiness. Before God and his host stood the Aetherians, the glory of the most high heavens. 15. The attendants then quickly spread the Homa. The masters of arches opened the floor and sides of the Erevagna, and there, seated or standing, was ready the central part of the Aetherian council chamber, even as if the throne of God had been built for it. Then came forth the chieftainess, Penta Armage, accompanied by Aux and Hauha and Siwagon, and arriving before the throne stood, waiting for the salutation and the sign. 16. God, still sitting on the throne, said, Daughter of Jehovah, chieftainess of Haotsaidi, in the name of the Father, and hereupon he gave the, uh, the sign Ark of Speta. Penta Armage and her three companions saluted in the sign of the circuit, which was the highest compliment any god of the earth had ever received. 17. Penta Armage said, by Jehovah's command am I before thee, O God, in love and wisdom and power am I come. Behold, 
My voice is his voice, creator of worlds. 18. God said, My throne is founded in Jehovah's name. Come thou and honor it, and bring thy most high gods and goddesses with thee. 19. They went forward then, and all the gods and goddesses and lords and lordesses stood up, saluting by shaking hands, and then Penta Armage went and sat in the midst of the throne. Meanwhile, the Esenars chanted a hymn of thanksgiving. 20. Penta Armage, being under the voice of Jehovah, said, For joy created I man and woman, for seasons of labor and seasons of recreation. Be ye mirthful before me, and jubilant toward one another, in remembrance of my creations. And when I call you to labor, behold, my hand will move upon you for the furtherance of my kingdoms in their resurrections. 21. Hereupon the multitude broke off from their places and staleness, and commingled together joyfully. And all that were on the throne came down and went into the multitude, saluting and rejoicing.